Hi everybody, it's Lisa Murray here. Hi my sweet lifers. Today we're hanging out for another Martini Talks with a good friend of mine, Ken Murray. Ken, thanks for being here today. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. Yeah. Ken's written a book called On Par. It's about a really neat guy. Tell me about that first. Let's talk about him. Yeah, On Par is a, it's a book about Colonel Ralph Parr. And uh, he was a 34-year uh, full bird colonel in the Air Force. Um, his claim to fame was he flew in, in three major wars. He flew uh, P-38s in World War II, he was a double ace in Korea in F-86s, and then flew F-4s in Vietnam. And the stories that he told, I listened to him for five years or so, and finally decided, hey, someone needs to tell his, tell his story, and uh, got hooked up with a couple of other guys and coerced into it, uh, easily coerced. And uh, so I interviewed him for um, six months to a year and uh, wrote the book about him and uh, it's ready to roll there's there's a uh, it's out in the first edition the second edition is, is uh, on its way as it's well on its way. Yeah. yep I'm gonna have information for you guys that are watching on the episode notes to be able to get this so that you know where to, to order it from is it on Amazon it is yeah it yeah is. pretty much anywhere you can find it yep so that for sure that's so cool that you did that too because you know that's the thing we were talking about before we actually mic'd up is that there's so many of those guys that are leaving us and there's so many really cool stories that they have to tell there if they'll really tell are. them there really are and, yeah you know sounds like he's a really cool guy i have not admit haven't had a chance to read the book yet but i'm going to be reading the book and yeah i love to hear stories about people that have served our country and he seems like a really cool dude yeah he really was and i tried to write it um for the for the forces out there uh mothers um you know it's it's for male female it's for it's for everyone there's really inspiring stories that guy had nine lives uh he went through a lot and that's kind of what i try to pull from the story his perseverance um his his ability to when you get backed into a corner you find a way out you know Pivot. exactly Pivot. yeah you've got to do something and we've all faced that with the pandemic and everything else you know everyone you got to be flexible and able to shift gears and, and go a different direction yeah. to, to funnel your way down to reach your ultimate goal. Exactly. So. Exactly. Well, and so speaking of that, you know, we talked about, we've got a lot in common, you know, I'm a writer, you're a writer, um, I'm a photographer, you're a photographer. Um, but share me, share with the viewers and, and with me again, just so they can hear it, your story. You know, you, you went to the air force as well. Yes. So I, uh, I was born and raised in a small town in Iowa, Hudson, Iowa. And, uh, my parents had the the newspaper there, so growing up with them and working in the in the shop with them, um, I started taking pictures when I was seven or eight years old. You know, just kind of messing with it. I'd go go out and shoot the corn crop as it was coming up in the right. in the spring, that sort of thing. But um, as time went on and I was growing up, I uh, started shooting the high school sports for them. Then I started playing the high school sports, so I sh couldn't shoot anymore. But um, did all that, shot their news story, news images for them, and then went to Northern Iowa and was the photo, the editor of the or the photo editor of the Northern Iowa, which is their student newspaper there. So, shot all the college sports and that sort of thing. So it's in my blood. I, I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, publishing know. and shooting for exactly. sure. Exactly, well over forty years for sure. Um, did that. I graduated from Northern Iowa and went to the Air Force and flew KC one thirty five tankers, air refueling tankers. And um, so flew with them for, for 25 years and then uh, carried my gear with me everywhere we went all over the world. Yeah. So got some good stuff, got some good aviation stuff. As I was uh, preparing to retire in 06, I really didn't know when, what my future held, what, when I was going to retire mm -hmm. um, from the Air Force. So I thought I'm gonna have something that's, uh, that's set up so it's ready just I can, I can wear a flight suit the last day and wear dockers or jeans right. on Monday and, Keep and roll right into that next career. Yeah. So I started Mach 3 photography then and uh, and did that and got that rolling, um, shooting high school sports for the most part. Retired, came over here, shot a lot for Max Preps, which is CBS Sports Max Preps, mm -hmm. which is it's high end photography, sports photography. Right. And um, and it sold to exactly. the yeah. newspapers exactly. and news they, 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 reporters yeah. and yeah, it's that level. It's yeah, and mostly parents are the are the clients there. The parents really go nuts over good, solid, crisp images of their kids. You know, yeah. 
Well, with that, you can build your portfolio and got in with Icon Sportswire. So I started getting credentials and shooting the Texans, the Astros, the Dynamo, the Dash, uh, Aggies football, Aggies basketball, um, LPGA, PGA. That's that's kind of my forte right now is the golf. Uh, I shoot that mostly, especially if there's only there's 16 NFL games a year. We get eight home games. It's you're yeah. not you're not going to make a living shooting no. eight NFL games. No. I, I promise you that. Yeah. We, we both know that. Yeah, yeah. So, but it sure is fun. It's, right. it's a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of people, uh, the camaraderie and that sort of thing. That's what I missed most about leaving the Air Force was the camaraderie and the just the friendships that you build. The thing I missed most was hanging out at the coffee pot on Monday morning and discussing the NFL games from from Sunday and that sort of thing. You don't have that. You, mm-hmm. Now it's me and the dogs and, you know, if my wife goes to work, she's gone and it's like, ugh. <laughs> that was hard. Zoom Elisa. Yeah. I'm hanging out here in my office yeah. doing the same thing. Exactly. I'm a people person too no, and I, I've that, missed the people. Yeah, that was I've hard. I've missed the people. That was very, very hard. So I um, started writing. Um, I've got another, I've got a 2021 project that started in November that, that uh, will be announced later, but um, uh, on par's on, on a roll. It's uh, I've got a lot of good feedback on it, and uh, it's rolling well. Good. So, yeah. Good. Well, you know, I'm in photography too, and all of y'all know that already. And I've just seen a very different change in the way that the whole photography business is before COVID. Right. And now with everything post COVID, or not really post COVID, but we're on the back end of it. Yep. Um, I don't think that things are going to be the way that they were ever ever again i really <laughs> don't i really either. don't i got a message this morning in my inbox from another cruise line saying that they're going to require a uh, vaccine certificate yep. uh vikings already pulled that a couple of weeks ago i i feel like very strongly i'm encouraging all of my travel clients uh that that that's what's happening in the industry yeah. across the board so i think yeah. that if you don't want to get one okay you may not be able to travel right and if you do get one, uh, okay, but they're going to, at some point, pretty quickly, probably require that you have proof that you did. Because this business of getting tested and then being negative and then getting there and then having to be tested again, again and I then know. getting stranded and yep. then having to come home and quarantine, none of that's jobbing too good with the people on both sides, not only the no. travelers, but also the suppliers. Right. You know, but no, the system's right. so broken because um, I called for a client. I guess it was maybe this time last week, I was the 57th agent in the kiosk to call to be waiting for 308 minimum minutes. And I just hung up the phone. I mean, like I have too much going on here to have to sit and be on hold, so I just have to call a different time. But it used to be you pick up the phone and you call and you could get a client booked for vacation within a matter of an hour. Yep. And now it's just so broken. So until it gets back to where it needs to be, I have no intentions or plans to be traveling anytime soon anyway. parked here with the YouTube channel and yeah. that was my pivot you know yeah, we talked about that and you got to do what you got to do and and do what's best for you at the time I guess uh, I think everyone's in the same boat actually mm-hmm. so I don't know what the future holds um, yeah things are ch- times are changing it's crazy it's like yeah it's crazy and it's especially crazy um, with James Edward you know we're graduating in about a month and a half and he's not leaving for school yeah Staying home. Yep. No, Not got any intentions of doing any of that nonsense yep. at all. You know. No. Found the MIT open sourceware for him to go and take all the classes that he wants, yep. and it's all free. And he's just going to self-teach himself what he wants to learn about, and work on his LLC, and yep. build his portfolio, and keep working in the family business of real estate. And you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Normally, I would have thought that both the children would have taken off and gotten a dorm and moved into the schoolhouse right. rock and. Yeah. Been over there exactly. as a regular college student for four years and hanging out and doing stuff. Right. Not so much. Not so much. No, They're scared. They're yeah, scared to do that. It's. I don't know what's the, what the answer is either. Uh, there's. You're lucky that you have a, a mature son that's that can handle what he's what he's what he wants to do. Um, if there are people out there with uh, little or lack of guidance, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the other half yeah, of that no. equation is that there's a lot of people that just need to be yeah. come an employee. Right. right. And honestly, I mean, he looked at me and said, I'm not doing it. And, yeah. and I thought my mom and daddy are probably rolling over in their graves because, you know, daddy was a surgeon and mama yeah. was a nurse. And yeah. My grandmother was 
a school teacher from East Carolina. Yeah. She was a school teacher educated. And so it's unusual to have him have a great grandmother that was college educated, but he doesn't see any point in it. Right. He sees no point in handing no. somebody money to be, you know, right. teaching him whatever he already, yeah. and he's not planning on working for anybody a day in his life. And I haven't. Yeah. So the, the fault needs to be in, uh, you know, with both the kids, I'll have to say this. The first baby got married at 20. And all my friends in the client base was like, oh, how can you let her do that? And I was like, here's the deal. Bron Murray and I rode the first grade school bus together, and we got married at 20. And she has seen a very happy marriage from 20-year-olds yeah. forward 31 years this year. Yeah. So if I set that example, I can't very well come back to her and say, right. oh, no, you can't. Because I have given her the example of how it does work. Right. 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 And so with a child who sees his mother and father entrepreneurs and not going and doing a job like that, for him to make the call at 19, 18, 19, 18, whatever, you know, young, that I see, hey, I see that. I want that, too. I can't again. I can't. I I did it. I I gave it. I gave the the example and you've done you've done your job. So, you know, and that's the thing. You can't backpedal that stuff. Nope. So just as more as you can't backpedal if you were bad. Right. Yeah, you know, if you sit right. around doing nothing and show the kids that that's how you're supposed to live your life. And exactly that's right. half the time what they end up turning into. So I'm not sorry that he's not going off to school and I'm not sorry that she got married at 20. They've been married five yeah. years and they're happily married and it's all good. It's all gonna be just fine. Yeah. But you yeah. know, I guess for me as an artist through all this, it's a little bit sad in the photography side of it. Yeah. Because you know, you and I used to make a really nice living as photographers. Not so much anymore. And not so much anymore. No. And and so I, I, you know, people ask me now when they come see me because the studio is kind of getting transitioned a little bit from all studio to a little bit of storage, yeah. especially since the pipes busted and yeah, we had to bring yeah. stuff down from yeah. the attic. And, yeah. and I'm like, now might be a good time for me to go through the attic and see what I need to kind of get rid of. But I've got right. other things with the channel to do. So it's not going to happen overnight. So when they walk in the studio, they're kind of like, um, are you still shooting? I'm like, yeah but I'm not shooting like I was. And I don't know that I ever will again. And then I had another client come last night to pick up framing and she said, well, are you you doing uh, presentations? And I said, now ask, think about this a minute. How many times do you think somebody's gonna wanna come in here into the house and play on Thomas the Train and their 18 month old lick the train and then two hours later, here comes another baby yeah. That can lick the train. Oh, that's, so that's why yeah. the Thomas the train table's gone upstairs to the attic. Right. I still have my lollipop jar. Yeah. And I come over and grab the lollipops and give them to the babies. But the days of sitting in here for two hours and playing in the house and the next kid coming in two hours yeah. later and playing in the house, those days are over. No, I agree. I, I see it on my end with the sports side. Um, I, this past week, um, I, I have shot the Dell Match Play Golf, PGA Golf Tournament, five years in a row. This year, no credentials. They're just trying to weed out that workroom and minimize it to minimize the exposure. Fa- yeah, the fist- face-to-face exposure. So, I get it. I get it, it too. It sucks, but I get it. Well, you know. But you know what? You've got the ability to write, and I have the ability to write. Yeah. And you've got the ability to, to oh, yeah. move into other things. You're yeah. busy too. Yeah. You know, and I honestly, say the real estate market has been absolutely so on fire. I, I mean, know. like you can't show a house without 48, 24, maybe 72 hours. Somebody's got it pending. Yep. Yeah. If you like what you see, you better put a contract on yeah. it because if you don't, it's going to no, be gone. No. It's tight. No, they're fighting over It's them. tight. I heard that uh, the current day, the, the Houston area is down 68% inventory. Mm-hmm. So they're just no, there's just nothing, don't have it. nothing available we don't have it. to buy. Yeah. We don't have it. Yeah. I have people right now that want to have me sell their home, and they have been looking at homes. And I've encouraged them to find the home that they want to move to first. and move in first, because if we sell what they've got, which will sell really quickly, they yeah. will be stranded and there'll be, be no hotel. place to yeah. stay. Exactly. And so she has been looking, and every time I check in to see if she's okay, where she's at with that process, because I'm not double dipping that deal. Right. There's a family member involved for that. Yeah. yeah. And I respect that, yeah. you know. Yeah. And she said, oh my God, every time we see a house we like, we put a contract, we go in and it's already impending. Yeah. And it was just hours That's before. Crazy. And yeah, so I was talking, I don't know how much you're watching the channel, but Larry White Jr. is in investments in real estate and he's not licensed in Houston or in Texas rather, but he said, you know, there's this whole thing happening, right? Right now is not the time to be buying anything, yeah. right? Because it's a seller's market right? and it's tight, tight, tight. Mm-hmm. But as soon as the moratoriums are lifted and people who haven't been paying their mortgages and people who haven't been uh, paying their rent or whatever, yep. the whole market's going to turn and it's going to be a 
chilling field yeah. for those investors that want to come in and grab stuff up from the banks because those those banks don't want those mortgages. No. They don't right. want them. You're and that's right. what happened back in the early 90s with my father-in-law. You know, yeah. he, we showed up here. He showed up here. Um, you know, I was in art school, but he showed up here. And the the uh, strip shopping centers were empty. The skyscrapers were empty. Yeah. The houses were empty. Yeah. They had the bottom, the marketed bottomed out, and people had abandoned their homes and walked yeah. away from their mortgages. And there was just houses to be purchased for 200 uh, what, $150,000 now for $20,000, $15,000, three-bedroom, yeah, two-bath yeah, yeah, houses. Yeah. I mean, it was like, just mop it up. Oh, it's crazy. Mop it up. And so if you hold what you got right now and get prepared to purchase and invest, I'm telling you, from my perspective now with the history behind it, what Houston's like right now in another 24 months is going to be almost the opposite. Opposite, yeah. Oh, you just crazy. have to sit and wait for it. Yeah. which is a long wait, but you know, if you're in investment property, it's one of those things you have to get used to anyway. Yeah. But it's interesting too, and then the market, of course, with the stock markets have been kind of yep. crazy, 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 and the boys upstairs are doing that as well. So I hear every day what's Tesla doing and what's going on with this yeah, exactly. and Apple and whatnot, and yep. it's just been an interesting, it's interesting all the way around, no matter what we were talking about, whether it be the photography business or it be the real estate market or yeah. it be the world at large with the pandemic and its yeah. response to the travel industry everywhere you look it's really an interesting time it's not necessarily a happy time right but it's definitely not not a uh, boring right exactly <laughs> so what do you think you know we've been talking about all the changes and stuff what do you i know you've got another book coming out we're going to talk about that we're going to have you back when you've got it actually out but yeah. And what else have you got going on? Um, mainly uh, just working on the new book now. Um, I can go ahead and announce that, I guess. W with the second edition of On Par that's, that's out there now, that's, that is go uh, getting set to be released now, mm -hmm. um, I had the forward uh, written by General Dave Goldfein. And he, is the, he was the chief of staff of the Air Force, the number one guy, uh, led 680,000 people, you know, as far as... Uh, guard, active guard and reserve, plus civilians and that sort of thing. So he has a, he touched a lot of people with his leadership, and so it's a, it's going to be a book on leadership. But he was shot down in 1999 in Allied Force, okay, uh, in, his, in his F-16. So that story is told in there, and then we're going to apply his leadership foundation and principles and that sort of thing. The book uh, is currently titled uh, Every Challenge and Opportunity, Reflections on Servant Leadership. Um, so, uh, but I got him, he wrote the forward for the, for the for new, the second, for edition. The second edition. He wrote the forward and in the end, uh, just basically um, reached out and asked him if, if he was ever interested in writing a book that I'd be interested in talking. And so a couple weeks later, he, he uh, and replied, he replied and, and um, we got hooked up about December time frame and decided, this past December. Yes. Okay. Uh, during COVID, so decided that that would be a great 2021 project, and so we've been uh, we got the team put together that um, we talk every uh, about once a week, you know, one, once a week to ten days. We have a Zoom session with the team gets in and we just kind of discuss uh, direction that we want to go and uh, with each chapter. And it's going well so far. So far, we're on. Who what published chapter? you? This one was Austin McCauley. The the traditional publisher that picked it up is Changing Lives Press. Okay. Yeah. It's out of Austin. So, no, that's Austin McCauley is out of London actually. Okay. It's published I just, in London. I don't have yeah. my readers on either. Yeah, no worries. Okay. So the second edition is a traditional publisher, uh, Changing Lives Press, and so I'm very happy about that. Uh, much better distribution and marketing and that sort of thing. So. Um, we have a lot of authors on, and I reached out to um, another one of my friends on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. who's a publisher here in Houston. And actually, it's so funny how ironic the world is and how God just puts people oh, right in your oh, life. So we may be connected in that way, too. I'm going to share this with you while yeah. we're on film, even sure. though I wasn't planning on it. But, you know, that's how sometimes some of these sure. talks actually turn out to be really cool as well. So this is what's going on with me. So... I got a hold of this guy, and he got a hold of me back from LinkedIn, similar to the way mm -hmm. we've met. And he didn't realize that I had been writing Living the Sweet Life for the past 17 years. Because when people see my work, they see the signature. Right. They don't see my face. Right. 
And when you open up the magazines, you've got a little itty bitty tiny picture of the columnist there. You don't really see my yeah, face. Exactly. And so when he came to see me, he was like, oh my goodness, you're Elisa Murray, the Living the Sweet Life columnist and photographer. And I was like, yes. Two different things, pregnant naked babies, pregnant women, and you know, all that, babies in photography, right. the writer. And so he has been visiting with me. He's a publisher. He's been mm -hmm. visiting with me about publishing either a collection of the Sweet Life stories yeah. for the past 17 years or what's now come up is really my life story. Yeah. And, um, and so I was visiting with my publicist, whose mother is a very well-known Christian romance writer. She made an entire life of wow. that, like made enough of money to doing that to do it yeah. full time. Yeah. And she's since retired. And years ago, I wrote like a little children's book and we pitched it through her publisher and they were like, oh, well, if you were Madonna or somebody famous, we'd be yeah. able to print it. But since you're not, you're just a photographer in Houston. We can't really do anything with it. So right. it got rejected and rejected to the point where I don't like rejection anyway. No one does. Yeah, no one does. So yeah. I just stuck it in the shelf. It's over there in the drawer right there. And so let it go. And so all these years have gone by and now this guy's in my lap, you know, so to speak, saying, hey, I'm interested. And... And then it's like, well, there's more stories to tell. Stories that I didn't share in the Sweet Life column, because right. that column is like Paul Harvey. It's very sweet. It's very much yeah. a specific niche market for the area. Yep. Um, and it's always about you know promoting a business, which is how this whole show started. Right. My response to COVID and how do I help yeah. other people? Because I would be photographing you with your book yeah. and writing about the book and then sending them to where to go buy the book. Yep. And it would have been in print form and not in video form right. You know, if we had everything the way that it used to be. And right. so now everything's changed. But um, was visiting with Allison over the weekend and I was like, okay, this is really daunting. Like this is a whole can of worms that I have to open up because if I'm telling my story, then that means I need to tell my mom's story. And so, you know, mama got killed when I was little. And so then I oh, reached man. out to all of her friends in North Carolina that they were like in bridge or choir or handbells yeah, yeah. or whatever yeah. at the church. And I said, okay, I've got kind of an idea that is cooking. It's on the back burner. Yeah. It's not full time. It's not full thing. I haven't really committed to it yet, but I've got uh, things are starting to come into play where people are starting to come into my life. that's starting to show me the signs that this is now time to do this. Right. And um, so Allison was like, how are you going to write this? And where are you going to start with this? And so I called her back and I'm like, this is just really not okay. Like, this is just really not okay. This is just too much. Right. And, and she's like, yeah, but you can tell the stories. You tell the stories and we just, we're just like, oh my God. And I'm like, I understand that. But for me to have to sit down and write the stories is really difficult. Right. And compiling the stories and making it make sense to the stories. And so I went back to my old notes and I have like 239 stories. Oh my. Right? That are specific that I can do all off the top of my head sure. that I never wrote about in full. Sure. Either because it wasn't appropriate or because it just didn't make any sense for something that I could tie into living the sweet life. But it's stories about my life. And so then when I started getting these messages from these people over the weekend, literally as soon as I sent them texts and said, hey, I've um, been asked to write about my life. Um, I need stories about mom. Y'all knew her as adults. I only have a few. I was yeah. eight when she got killed. I don't yeah. really remember a whole lot about right. it. So I need for y'all to like come together and give me what you know. And I was getting like books, chapters over the weekend. People just came oh, out of nowhere. Man, like here's awesome. wonderful stories about mom and daddy and, and all of that. And so... I was like, okay, this is this is supposed to happen. This yeah. is supposed to happen. Yeah. So we talked again, and I said, okay, what what is your solution to this? And so I, and finally I came up with the idea that I would sit in front of the computer, and I would videotape, or in front of the phone, yeah. and I would videotape myself telling all the stories, just me yep. doing what I'm doing right now with you, right. but to the camera. And then what I would do is give that to her to figure out what to do with it. Right. And then she could figure out if we wanted to do like a trilogy or if, and then we'd have to have somebody put all of that stuff together because right. I've got all the content, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't really know how to weave the story. It's a Cinderella story, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's a Cinderella story. And Man, so that's it's interesting. It's really got a lot of really who's, cool. Who's Allison? Allison Simmons's mother, Karen Young, is the author. She is, is, is her daughter. And you. she has acted as her mother's publicist gotcha. for her mother's career. Yep. Like that's been one of the things that she's yep. done for her mom. And I shoot their son. I shoot her grandson. Mm -hmm. And he's in, in baseball. Mm -hmm. And he's about a year or two older than James Edward. And he's, yeah, he's two years older than James Edward. So I've been photographing him since he was, you know. Oh, yeah. And, um, and she has sort of taken oh, the responsibility awesome. of kind of guiding me along the way. And um, 
but this is really for her. It's like the culmination of years of talking to me about stuff. Sure. And she was like, it's going to be really kind of cool, but it's going to be painful. And I'm like, well, it's not fun. It's really not fun. And I always thought that somebody else would do it. Right. 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 And so it's different. Yeah. So it's interesting to be in a position where they're like wanting it. Um, but it may be that you're a part of that. Maybe it's a part of that, that you get all of the stuff and then you have to figure it out. But my reason for doing it on video is so not only will the great grandkids have me telling the story right. in me, me, right? But you can strip out the audio and have it on a podcast exactly. You can or clips for the book. You can rip it out and do what we were talking about with the AI and yep. have it translated out. Yep. So I don't have to sit there and write it. I can just like speak it thing, and yeah. then it just is there in transcript form. Yep. Yep. So yeah, I would be curious to talk to you about how what you, what you think that might look like for you. Um, it's not a matter of trust. It's a matter of being hurting people. You know, I yeah. saw an interview with Dave Sedaris, and Dave's writing is very similar to mine. We're both in North Carolina. I'm not gay, obviously, but right. the stories that he tells about his his sister's suicide and and just the family, um, you have to be very careful because you don't want to make yourself the person who they don't want to talk to anymore because right. they're scared. Everything right. that they say is now part of your material. Exactly. It puts you in a weird position no, it does. and I don't write fiction. I've always written nonfiction yeah. and the stories I've told in sweet life have always been true stories. Right. And so uh, people say, well, if it's true, it's no big deal. I said, it's not a big deal if it's true, unless it hurts somebody. And so that's one of the reasons why I haven't gone that, that route just yet, because I was telling her, I said, not everybody that could potentially be hurt, is dead yet right and I need for that's them tough. to go away no, that's tough. Uh, I want don't want them to go away right. but I need for them to go away to really be able to tell that truth yeah. and not feel like I've yeah. not told the truth so there's there's that to, that's that's the juggle that's the wrestle I'm at right now I'm yeah. struggling with that but to have somebody come to you and ask you for that is a big deal that is a big deal that is a big deal you talk about um, you've you stuck to nonfiction it's funny uh, obviously, on par is nonfiction. Once that was done and out initially, I've got I've got a back burner project as well. I've got a, it's a fiction uh, trilogy on this. This character's name is Bryce Lane, call sign Dirt. So it's Dirt Lane. It's kind of like a Jason Bourne That's type, awesome. type thing. That's yeah. awesome. And I've got it all laid out. I've got the first book. I probably had it three quarters of the way done when this got picked up, on par got picked up uh, by the traditional publisher and I kind of had to, whoops, yeah, we, need to, we, yeah. put, we added, uh, I got a bunch of images from uh, Margaret, uh, Ralph's wife. And so we put together, it's 22 pages, so 11 sheets of paper, both sides of family, family photos mm -hmm. in the second edition and then the forward from uh, General Goldfein. So I put that on the back burner and then the Goldfein book came on board so it's on the way back burner now that the, the fiction is the thing that I'm finding amazing is how with nonfiction it has to be 100% fact and accurate and just it has to be on point you can't publish something that's not you know with nonfiction you've got to make sure that everything is correct mm -hmm. you know and when you're um, like in Ralph's case he was 83 at the time I think and you know, was he really remembering that story precisely? Right. And so I'd ask him on a couple of different occasions and have him tell me the same story a couple of different times and just make sure that all the facts were jiving and talk to other friends of his to make sure that over the years, you know, that, and, and I'm, I'm not leaning on embellishment, but just to make sure that the right, facts right. are right. facts. That's right. really the way that it happened. With the nonfiction, with Dirt Lane, it's like, it's all over the he's, place. he's coming down the road and he hits that, he hits that uh, T intersection, you made a right turn. I don't really like that. I'm going to, why can't he turn left? Yeah. He makes the left turn and he goes this, you know, or he hits a fork in the road. Which which way is he going to go type thing? That's fun. You know, that's, that's a whole different realm. It's know. like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care which way he turns, you know. Yeah. You're just going at it. It's fun. It's great. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing too. I mean, it's interesting that, you know, we've got the same things because as a photographer, you're a people person. Yeah. you got to be engaging. Yeah. You won't be able to get people to do what you need them to do if you're not, right. especially for me with babies. I mean, it's just tough. It's tough. Probably the hardest thing to shoot, yep. honestly. 
I am not good at it. You know, I mean, like the whole baby thing. I mean, getting newborns to sleep yeah. and all the babies to giggle and everybody to giggle in the family at the same time. Yeah. All of that is a lot of work, a lot of energy, but it's a very much this yeah. is going on yeah, between yeah, yeah. me and you thing. Yeah. As a writer, it's just a whole nother in your oh, own world. It's, it's, You're by it's yourself. Right there, yeah. It's in between your eyeballs. Yeah. Yeah, You're in between your ears. Yeah. And it's, it's just a completely different skill set to have fun. both. And it's fun. Yeah, it is. It's fun that we it both is. got the same skill set. Well, yeah. I don't know if the future holds that you're the writer behind it. It would be kind of really groovy for me to have Ken Murray <laughs> on Elisa Murray yeah, as the writer for Elisa Murray. Yeah, and we'd go. share the same name and maybe yeah. be able to figure out if we actually, yeah. we sh I know we do, yeah. share the same heritage. Yep. There's no way we don't. Right. Uh, before he came in here to, to, to Mike Up, I showed him the Murray book we've got. And, yeah, you know, he's got it. he's got it brought down from Ireland over to, yeah. where is it, a... Minnesota, Minnesota yeah, and we're they, from uh, Scottish all the way down into the Virginia, North Carolina, but the same last name. So yeah. we know we're from the same so, yeah, people. We, it's just a matter of going and matter, finding where that connection. Yeah, figuring it out. And so I'm going to be working on that too. I'm not a big fan of Ancestry.com because I don't want to give my DNA away to <laughs> exactly. people. Exactly. Some kind of weird like that. Yep. But we might have to go that route yep. to get the answer to the yeah, to that exactly. question. But anyway, exactly. well, I want to thank you for being here today. Yeah, it's that a really was fun. interesting wonderful conversation would, and just in closing i would just say that uh with your with your travel community that you work with out there it's the perfect book for a vacation it's even it's an even better book for that veteran father grandfather uncle that is a veteran that you don't know what to get them for veterans day or for christmas or their birthday or something like that well, and it's near and dear to my heart, too, because both my daddy and Brian's daddy were in the Air Force. Yeah. My Uncle Jim, who was a photographer who taught me how to shoot Victorian, which made the yeah, magazine yeah. Yeah, yeah. cover and started this whole journey as a photographer, was oh, in the Air Force. So awesome. we're Air Force people, and yep. Air Force is, is in my heart. And so I just love, I love this, and I'm looking forward to reading it. And I thank you for sharing it with me and with the You're viewers. You're very welcome. Thanks. Thanks you guys, please don't forget to look in the episode information below so that you can figure out where to buy this book and the new book that's coming out as well. And You'll be back on the show. I will. And we'll be able to share that with you once it's here. So if you found any value in this, please do us a favor and like and share. Don't forget to ring the bell so that you're notified each week when we drop a new episode. And thank you, Ken, again for being here. Thanks, Lisa. And Appreciate another it. cool and groovy martini talk. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. All right. We'll see you soon.